I wanted to address a uh, comment from Beelzebeeb, um, Beelzebeeb, who uh, says, I disagree. I think it's rude to say people are virtue signaling, signaling for writing to their MP or protesting, asking for a ceasefire. So the first thing to say is that I don't think people are virtue signaling by writing to their MP at all. I do think people are virtue signaling by going on a march. Uh, I don't think a march is useless. I think a march is a wonderful way to establish unity and camaraderie and a uh, and to convince people, uh, yourselves, of a purpose. But I think given the way the government has constrained protest, given the way police, uh, Carol and Kettle protesters, a protest march is the news of today and the rubbish of tomorrow. It's not remembered by MPs. It doesn't have any great effect. The bigger the march, you would think, the more effect it has. The bigger the march, the more of a problem it is considered. And what is re what remains is the problem. And uh, what Suella Bravman has highlighted of the uh, pro-Palestine marches is the idea that there are banners which contain um, hate protests and that there are hate slogans being reeled out. And often uh, that is a misunderstanding by the people who are quite honestly uh, marching for peace and quite honestly and enthusiastically calling for an end of the Gaza siege. A much more effective way, and I keep saying this, so I don't understand why anybody would say I'm, I'm suggesting it's virtue signaling, is to write to your MP. Now, many MPs don't bother replying. I know. I know from my own experience. I think it's rude, and I think it's, um, it also misses their, uh, their job description. They have forgotten that that is their job. And there are many MPs who will write back, or at least their assistants will write back. Often it's a sort of form letter. They, the, the, the method that's, um, uh, that's grown up now in the last 20 years is that they pool these letters and they get uh, paragraphs back from a central uh, civil service office, which they can then insert into the letter that they send back to you. So it's not ideal, but the the reality is these letters that you write in form a <laughs> a wadge of real correspondence which remains after the event. So a march, go on a march, sign a petition. Those things can be dismissed very easily. A petition might result in a debate in Westminster Hall, which few MPs will attend and which will have no uh, realistic impact on the way the government proceeds. Tell me of one debate in Westminster Hall pushed forward by, the, by, by a petition that has actually had any effect. I don't know of any. It, it, that, that, I'm afraid, is it does become virtue signaling. But a letter, you have no idea who your MP may become. We may know who our MP is. We may, for example, know um, what our MP's interests are. But as, for example, the MP for North Islington, for, I think, 32 years, he was an insignificant backbench MP, and suddenly he is the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn. That is remarkable. And Jeremy Corbyn has a reputation of being one of the more active constituency MPs. I know that Jeremy Corbyn answers his mail. And so the issues that you raise, uh, and, and in fact, do you remember the way Jeremy Corbyn used to, used to do question time? He used to talk about issues raised with him by constituents. How? Well, sometimes by surgeries, but those surgeries would have been preceded by correspondence. And so 
it would be absurd for me to suggest that writing letters to your MP is virtue signal. I think that is the way forward. I think that is a more effective form of changing. Uh, it's a slow form of changing the way things work than going on a march, than signing a petition, probably even than doing a YouTube video or, or, or something on Instagram or Twitter. These things, these things help to energize our society. They help to form cohesion. They, felt, they help to create unity, but I don't think they change the political map. Letters, on the other hand, I think have a greater effect on politics than anything else other than the ballot box and a general election or a by-election. Those things MPs notice. As for the wider international issue, I think, again, letters have an impact because they're so, we get so few of them, they sit on the desk. They linger in the mind. Not form letters. Form letters are the um, fodder for a dustbin. But letters that you have carefully written that target the issue, not too long. Letters that are signed, that show your personal commitment. Uh, and letters to people in this country, letters to people in other countries. They linger. They linger. And they have an effect. I was very surprised when um, I, I was involved in a, in a court case, an international court case. And in the, early day, in the early days of the issue, I had sent many letters to um, the president of that country, to the prime minister, to members of the... Uh, political parties and so on. And I was slightly disappointed. I didn't get very many replies. But when I got the uh, legal bundle um, through the help of, oddly, David Cameron, some of my letters were contained in that legal bundle. So they had gone into the system. They had gone into the system. And those letters were accompanied by translations. And that demonstrates, does it not, how efficacious, how important is that old habit of letter writing? It doesn't matter whether you type it out. It doesn't matter whether you do it by handwriting. It doesn't matter, actually, whether these things are read. What matters is that accumulated a pile of, of personal correspondence, which in the end it is impossible to ignore. Ignore a protester at a march. Ignore a petition because you've got a, a system in Parliament now for bypassing that. It's, it's the debate in Westminster Hall. But you can't ignore correspondence without being called lazy or discourteous. And heaven knows you've heard me tell you've heard me tell you on many an occasion that Nadine Dorries couldn't be bothered to do her work. That's because she couldn't be bothered to answer her letters. Lazy, discourteous, and not doing her job.